We all know that the most powerful telescope in history is the James Webb Space Telescope that has recently been launched to space and it's trying to do what it's best at. We've made a lot of video about the James Webb Telescope and our expectation is very high but to this day James Webb hasn't showed us anything revolutionary yet. But with all that we're still waiting for it. You guys know the previous powerful telescope, the Hubble, a telescope that's about 30 years old and it has taken some revolutionary pictures. In getting to know about Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxy, Hubble has helped us out a lot. This old telescope is still at work and it's showing us what it's capable of. Just like we said, the Hubble telescope showed us the Andromeda galaxy and showed us how big it is. Allow us to go back in time for a second. In the year 964 AD, Abdul Rahman Sufi, a Persian astronomer, was the first person to discover the Andromeda galaxy. He was from Ray of Iran, but he moved to Shiraz to do astronomy. And it was in that city where he found Andromeda. With the equipment he had back then, he saw the galaxy, but he didn't realize what it actually was. And that is why in his writings, he wrote that it's a giant cloud far away. This passes and nobody really follows up on it. Then about 700 years, in the year 1612, German astronomer Simon Marius looks at the Andromeda galaxy once again. And he writes that I know it's a cloud, but why does it shine? This astronomer doesn't realize that this is a galaxy, but in his writings he writes that it's a candle in space. Many more years pass until we get to the year 1785 when British astronomer William Herschel looks at Andromeda once again. And in his writings he says, this is a cluster of gas and space dust, something that we call nebula these days. But William Herschel didn't really find anything specific about the Andromeda galaxy. But even though he was 800 years past Sufi and he had way better equipment, he still couldn't figure it out. And he only wrote about what Sufi wrote about 800 years before him. Time passes and the world is quickly advancing until we get to the year 1920. This is the year where Harlow Shapley and Herbert Curtis Two astronomers are having a debate. Curtis says that Andromeda is a galaxy and it's extremely far away from us and has nothing to do with our neighborhood. He even estimated how far it is from us and he said it's about 500,000 light years away from us. What Curtis said made a lot of people have a funny reaction, especially other astronomers. They even made fun of him for saying that like 500,000 light years? Where did you get that number? Five years passes and then we get to the year 1925. And this is when a famous astronomer we all know by the name of Edwin Hubble speaks about the Andromeda galaxy. Edwin Hubble says, what Mr. Curtis is saying is correct and don't make fun of the distance he estimated. Because he's actually short on the distance, the distance between us and the Andromeda galaxy is 900,000 light years. We all know that Hubble was wrong about that as well. Because the distance between us and Andromeda is two and a half million light years. We are inside the Milky Way galaxy and everybody knows that. But back then they didn't and they didn't know how ginormous these galaxies are. One of the many reasons we found out how big the universe is was that we found Andromeda because it's at a distance where it could easily be studied compared to other bodies. The first clear picture that was taken of Andromeda was taken in the year 1888 by Isaac Roberts. After this photo, this is when astronomers began to realize that we're inside the same thing as this. And this disk of stars around us is a galaxy. This disk of stars was basically the Milky Way galaxy and they slowly realized that we're inside this thing. 
in the 1970s, astronomy enters another level. In that decade, Vera Rubin, an astronomer, began to study the Andromeda galaxy. And what she said surprised everybody because she stated that the size of this galaxy is about 220,000 light years across. Vera Rubin was also one of the first astronomers that said galaxies are spinning like the solar system. And these huge bodies in space have a nucleus. Nowadays, astronomers believe that Andromeda is way older than the Milky Way and is way bigger. And one of the reasons that it shows its age is the size of it. Whenever it confronted any body in space, it just ate it up. Andromeda is so hungry for more that it's not going to give up on any huge bodies in space either. Things like the Milky Way galaxy and it's planning to engulf this galaxy. But that takes a lot of time and astronomers write that in about 3 billion years there would be no Milky Way galaxy anymore. And Andromeda is going to eat this galaxy like I eat breakfast. When Hubble was staring at the Andromeda galaxy, it found something quite strange. And that's in the supermassive black hole in the center of this thing. The photo that was sent from the center of Andromeda really surprised astronomers all over the world. Because the picture shows us that there seems to be two black holes spinning around each other. After this photo, scientists came up with tens of theories. One of the most believable theories is that there's two supermassive black holes in the center of this galaxy that's spinning around each other. They continue and say the reason that this took place is that billions of years ago, two giant galaxies collided with one another and they each had a supermassive black hole in the center. And that is why they formed a ginormous galaxy that has two supermassive black holes in the center of it. Black holes that are so goddamn powerful that they do not want to go inside one another. So they continue to spin around each other. Astronomers call these galaxies double nucleus galaxies. From the day where Abdurrahman Sufi found this galaxy to this day, there has been thousands of pages of information about this galaxy and different theories were formed because of it. But this galaxy is so far from us that we really can't prove anything we find. To this day, we've only found 5,000 exoplanets and they're very nearby us in the Milky Way. So obviously, they're not that far from us. In this case, if we want to travel to them, we have to travel for hundreds of thousands of years to get to them. At least with the equipment we have today. But imagine we want to go to Andromeda Galaxy. You might ask, why doesn't the James Webb Space Telescope look at this thing? We have to say that James Webb can't really look inside a galaxy like that. And that's because the James Webb was not designed to do that. One of James Webb's job is to find exoplanets. But all the exoplanets it's planning to look at is inside the Milky Way. And that's because we have to get to know our own galaxy first, then go to the neighboring galaxies. But I thought James Webb was going to look after the Big Bang. Yes, it's planning on doing that. And it's because it's designed to look a few million years after the Big Bang took place. But the telescope is looking at a vast area, extremely far away. But if you want to look inside a galaxy like Andromeda and find exoplanets inside this thing, it's extremely difficult. Because to put it in simple terms, the stars in this galaxy blind you from seeing the exoplanets inside it. But we're not saying it's impossible to look inside the galaxy. Because if we wait 3 billion years, we can have a chance to look inside this thing. 